So what uh, this proposal attempts to find is the solution to uh, the problem of leasing addresses that we don't have in the region. Current LACME policies only consider transfer IPv4 addresses, permanent transfer. And what we want to see is whether those transfers could also be applied uh, as a solution to the lease problem. There's always uh, contradictory feelings in the community when we discuss this topic. And when we debated this topic in the past event, I couldn't find an easy way out or an easy solution, but then I thought, why not use in a community the uh, mechanism that the community is also uh, is already using and, and agreed and, and lease the temporary transfers. And as Arturo said before, this is something that is sometimes uh, a need. I need to oversee how a lease is managed when purchasing this good, although it's not a good. How do we consider a, ter a temporary or a permanent transfer? So after the debate that we had in our last event, it is important that we can share policy compliance with a system that is similar to a lease to avoid security problems to our community, to the R, I, R, the NIR, and so on. So the fact that we need to return those addresses once the lease is up is important. And at the same time, we are trying to avoid having an excessive operational burden for the RIR or the NIR to the extent possible. And it is also important, and someone said this and, and, and mentioned in the past presentation, our objective to a large extent as a community is to move towards IPv6. Why not? considering as part of this proposal a requirement that we do so with the implementation of IPv6. So you need addresses and probably let's demand it. Let's make it mandatory for the deployment of IPv6. If you don't want to deploy IPv6, it's because you have a lot of financial resources. You can do a permanent transfer and you probably don't need a lease. One of the aspects that was also discussed in that session is that we wanted to benefit the region. So this type of transfer should only be applied within the region. Otherwise, we are at a disadvantage when we consider other regions like RIPE, that they already have lease and are in for some resources so that they have much more experience and volatility, so to speak, when it comes to transfers because they have more years of experience although it's not necessary to even mention it. But if we were to accept this type of transfer, the board could set fees to cover those additional operational costs. The same in my other slides. To the left, we have the current text and to to the left current text and to the right the changes. Sometimes we have very small changes. We already have enabled and accepted by the community the permanent transfers. Let's just add the text that we need in this case to allow for temporary transfers as well. And those temporary ta transfers need to meet certain additional conditions additional to the permanent transfers. As I showed in my last slide, only within the region, these transfers would only happen within the region. Again, and the text I'm adding, however, in the case of temporary transfers, a, a recipient could only receive a total of slash 20. Someone suggested slash 22. I asked many users in the region, and in some cases, they said a slash 22 could be too little. I would be flexible in that case. Speaking with Arturo this morning, he mentioned that why not not even having a limit? I'm open to those changes if the community thinks that that is more adequate. In the last version, this is version two of this proposal. This is a proposal that was submitted after the last event, and we didn't discuss it in the public forum. Only 
I only submitted it to the list. In the last version, I thought that it would be good to have only one log of those movements, but based on comments in another region in APNIC where I also submitted a similar proposal. And I think that after the impact assessment, I thought that it would be better to have two, se two separate logs because the log for permanent transfers is used for systems between our IRs. So by having separate logs, we are pre we are um, we can just uh, avoid having this coordination between the both registries. What else? In the case of temporary transfers, LACNIC will return that information to original values before the transfer when the uh, operation uh, deadline is met. So if you don't return it, it doesn't matter because the registry will automatically update. That's the idea. And these are the particular requirements for this type of temporary transfers. And there is an important change. Uh, compared to version one, is that in the last version I told uh, that we were telling LACNIC for LACNIC to be the steward of all of these requirements. What I am now saying, uh, based on the discussions with different brokers, that they include these conditions in their contracts as well. Since it is them who are running the business, they have to verify that these conditions are being complied that there is an uh, ASN, that we are deploying IPv6, that we are announcing the resources, that we use our PKI, that we um, uh, are compliant with manners, and so on. So LACNIC is no longer responsible for doing it and, and checking security, but the security uncertainty here is uh, managed by those who are leasing. And if they do not have due diligence in complying with their own contract, so these are conditions under the contract, LACNIC might say, we are not allowing you to further lease because I am taking back those resources. After maybe one first warning, it wouldn't be done after the first. I mean, you don't do it after the first time. You give a second or a third chance for this to be resolved. Now, that's basically my proposal, additional information. As far as we know, this type of transfer is only allowed on RIPE. At the same time, RIPE does not contemplate lease leasing as something explicit under the policy, but it is not forbidden either. So it's up for discussion, I guess. Both in APNIC and AFRINIC, they do not contemplate leasing or temporary transfers. They are basically prohibited, same as here right now. And ARIN contemplates temporary transfers of some resources, but they do not contemplate leasing as something valid to justify that need. So that is a little bit of contradiction. There's some control over that. And this is an impact impact assessment, and I, I will reply to your impact assessment in a moment. Franco, from LACNIC staff to present the impact assessment. The impact assessment of the last version is worth mentioning as well, as it applies to both. Franco, you have three minutes. As Sergio said, this is the impact assessment for the proposal. Staff comments. In the first place, we believe that the proposal introduces the concept of temporary transfers in addition to the permanent transfer. Introducing the concept is done in the already existing sections, and some paragraphs are not clear enough as to what transfers transfer that refers to. The new text mentions the deadline of the operation and the possibility for renewal. As it is stated, in section 232184, it defines operational details that we believe should be resolved during implementation. With regards to the first comment, we believe that processing temporary um, transfers should be done differently to 
permanent transfer. So we need to be very clear when the text refer to one or another type of transfer. In temporary transfers, we believe that LACNIC needs to make it very explicit that this is a temporary transfer on the who is even uh, publishing the name of the title holder. So the proposal 232-1811 suggests the inclusion of obligations for temporary transfers that are currently not applied to permanent transfers or even to normal allocations. In addition, it is contrary to the objective of the policy manual, the fact that LACNIC should act as an intermediary between two parties uh, that are involved in an agreement. So controlling compliance or manners practice would require LACNIC to monitor and implement policies it does not oversee. And based on those comments, the staff recommends with regards to the first comment, we recommend to establish an independent section on the manual of two for treating things uh, that are exclusively related to temporary transfers to avoid confusion. The second comment, we recommend eliminating the 30-day deadline. And the third and last comment, we propose eliminating the section. There is already a section that establishes that the title holder and the recipient of that resource must comply with all the existing policies, 232.18.8. Impact on registry and other systems. This proposal has a strong impact on our registry systems, LACNIC's database and internal systems. It requires coordination with the uh, nurse, RIR. If you could go back to my slides, please. Very quickly, I will not repeat what Franco said. Well, in the, the first item, I, I think that the new text clarifies it. I think that it is better to have one section that explicitly states which are temporary, which are permanent. I mean, if you would like it otherwise, it would just be a matter of having two sections, but I don't think it's worthwhile adding more text when I think it's clear. I eliminated the 30-day deadline in the second version, so I agree with that comment. I think that the community could decide to manage this detail uh, uh, up at a certain extent. It's discretionary, but I, I think that we can eliminate it, no problem. I've changed from one log to two. This is something that I, I mentioned before, so that is reasonable than the last two items, I said that this is not under LACNIC's oversight anymore, but rather the offerer, and it is important, and this is one of the most recurrent comments in the discussion of the other proposal to have a certain control or certainty as to how to manage these resources, and I think that this is initially what the community is asking for, and that would be all. Thank you. Let's begin with the discussion. The mics are open on the floor. Also <clears throat> on Zoom, you have the Q&A. Artun Servin from Google. I'm more inclined to accepting the proposal. There are some items that I would have to review. I told Jordi. One is the slash 20. I think that is something that should be open. And all the restrictions or having ASN, IPv6, I would delete those. I would do without. We just need uh, justification on the use of those addresses. But those would be my comments. Um, the logs, I'm not sure what the best mechanism would be. I'm not fully convinced on the logs. And I would like to continue seeing both proposals on transfers. Both have good things. So I think it is worthwhile continuing discussing both. I 
don't think that we could mesh them. I don't think that we can combine them because they do address different aspects. I'm still thinking about the need. Is it necessary to do it? Is there, is there a need? Is there not a need? So mm, we might not need it, but well, I, I think this is something that we need to continue in discussion as the community. I think that we should continue with both proposals until we decide which one's best. So in general, I agree. I would just clarify those items. I think that some of the things that we don't agree with is the, the, the last section of all of those requirements that I think, and I might have misread it, but based on the discussion on the list and what I have discussed with other people in the community, I think the community wants additional requirements. Other than that, I have no problem eliminating the slash 20. Wesley Correa from Paraguay, I agree with the spirit of this proposal, and I even almost fully agree with all the point. I fully agree with the requirements for transfers. I understand that these temporary transfers one to uh, allow to, to, to those that have no IPv4, allow them for more wiggle room so they can implement v6. So making it a requirement that v6 is implemented, I agree with that. I was one of them in the discussion list that pushed for the slash 22. If someone needs anything further, uh, slash 22, they probably have enough financial power to have a transfer from anywhere in the world. And even though it's not the same proposal, this sort of follows the same line with the 4.10 policy at Arin that defers only one slash 20 24 for those new ones, the ones that are using transition techniques for IPv4. So if Arin understands that the slash 24, only one is enough, I think the slash 22 is more than enough for the scenario of this proposal. And I want to congratulate for all of this work. I imagine that this has taken a lot of hard work. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you were the person that in the list said that instead of a slash 20, a slash 22 was good. And actually, that's what I had stated in my draft, my first draft as slash 22, but other people were against it. So I think that this is where the community can provide good feedback on what we're missing. And also the chairs said, we need more movement. We need more people on the community list and just maybe not even going for a third version of the proposal. I personally, in deployments that I have done myself, I'm working right now on a deployment of 25 million users with IPv6 only and a slash 24 on four pops. And that's enough. And we're speaking about 25 million users with 464. So that is good proof. I would not have a problem with reducing it. Now, I have needed four slash 24s because we need deployment on NAT64 for POPs. So that is a little bit, I mean, reality just goes over my head sometimes when I think that we need less. So having only one single slash 24 and dividing it into four sections for the four POPs might not be easy. Ricardo Patara. Again, I'm not going into the debate whether leasing is right or wrong. But to your proposal, I don't agree, but I think that if the concern is that if we are trying to sort things out regarding leasing, if there are so many requirements, if the requirements that are sometimes hard to comply with, that could be a barrier for that to happen. So I don't think that is the best option. And we are not preventing addresses from leaving the region either. So to lease an IPv4 address to a member of the region, I mean, if you have some obstacles and to go outside, there are no barriers, no obstacles. So the person will probably have to choose what's better for them. And, and also with regards to the obligations, even though, so the person, the party transferring, I mean, there's still a responsibility on LACNIC's back. Because if that ISP is not complying, that's something that we need to validate. 
and that would be a burden for LACNIC. So I don't agree with how it is stated. Thank you, Ricardo. I encourage you to participate on the list, or even as I have offered many times in the past, please co-author a proposal with me. I'm still open to that possibility. Okay, so we will now have the three final comments or question as we are running a little bit late. Nicolal, Nicolas Antonello, speaking for myself, I still don't agree with the policy and I'll tell you why. First, in a way, and we've mentioned this in the past many times over when debating the transfer policy or policies, we have a great capacity to try to solve everything, whether we can or we cannot. Now, the format, I think that alone is a transfer. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter whether we like it or not. That will happen whether we want it or not, whether LACNIC is participating or not. Now, setting conditions, as the policy does, will not help. I don't think it is necessary to have to ask them to have V6 or not even we cannot ask them to comply with manners. Manners is a standard, not even a standard. It's a set of good practices and it's optional here in China, everywhere. We cannot force someone to comply with something that I myself might not even comply. It's a set of best practices that it's optional. So we cannot make it mandatory. And the other conditions, autonomous system and well, so on, Arturo mentioned many already. I think it would be better to eliminate that from the policy just to clean, to keep a clean policy and, and, and making it easier to accept it. I would eliminate so many restrictions to the policy. We could eliminate some of those restrictions. But again, as I told Arturo, I think that the community wants those controls to be there. And, and, and the community, but not me. Well, the rest of the community or, or, or a, a good section of the community. I know you don't. Hernan Arcidiaco. Jordi, I congratulate the fact that there are two proposals trying to solve a problem that we all have. Let me just mention a, a few comments. With regards to the clarity, I think that the wording is a little bit confusing, but I'm also open to accepting it as is if the proposal moves forward. Right, yeah, we, we should maybe edit the text. Yes, uh, uh, that would be editing the wording, editing the text. It was not clear at times for me. With regards to the limits, unlike Arturo, I think that we do need a limit as many of the voices are those of small ISPs who are saying that they are doing this in unregulated or irregular conditions, so to speak. So the limit, I think it would be good to keep it. And finally, the requirements. I agree with Nico when he mentioned, um, well, he mentioned about manners and IPv6, and I agree with you when you say that the community wants this. I mean, IPv6 is something that we might be able to verify over time because sometimes you can at the beginning, but how do you sustain it? It is easy to automatize, right? But this could lead to cheating. Right, yeah, I mean, you can cheat with everything if you don't really think about it. True. But well, any, anyway, that was my comment and I congratulate that this discussion is happening. Franco? Franco? And there's a hand you know, on, on, on Zoom. Fernando? 
two very quick comments about the proposal and an important point in all of these attempts in trying to use uh, these resources and leasing that have been allocated to others, something that I think it's important. And this is something that we have discussed for a long time, not only in the public policy forum, but in the IP assignation um, assignment process. And we cannot forget and we cannot ignore the needs and justify the use. That point, I think, is very positive. In the proposal on the maximum size of a slash 20, if that is a proposal for a transition method, this is something that we should maintain a limit of a slash 20. With a slash 20, an organization might have the financial ability to have a permanent transfer. It doesn't make sense that something that is temporary will stay as something that is permanent. If you have a slash 20, you are in a good condition to have a permanent transfer. And finally, whether I agree or I'm against, I still don't know whether I'm in favor or against the proposal. I'm not sure that if in practice, this might be a hidden lease. So slash 20, it's a complex aspect. For example, in my in my example, an ISP, a big ISP, five, 25 million users. Now, if I restricted to a slash 22, I would not be able to do it if I didn't have the resources. Now, we also need to consider that in these cases, as is it the case for my client, it's not in the region, uh, the client needs the transfer, but only temporary. So it doesn't make sense to force them to a permanent transfer and even looking for more funds if they need a second transfer again. But they could just use a, a, a temporary transfer of four slash 24, use it for a few months or a few years, and then deciding that NAT64 in a single pub is enough and the entire NAT64 traffic goes to that pub through the interconnection between pubs. So that is details that are hard to justify, but basically I'm, I'm just going based on my experience. Thank you, Jordi. Thank you, everyone in the room for your comments. And thank you, Jordi, for your proposal. We are running quite late. So let's get a feel of room temperature. And let's also run the poll on Zoom. So those of you who agree with the proposal, please raise your hand. Ah, muchas gracias. Pueden bajar. Aquellas personas que están en contra de la propuesta. If you are against, please raise your hand. Manténgalo un minuto más. Pueden bajar, por favor. Aquellas personas que se abstienen. And you abstain, please raise your hand. Please keep your hand raised for just one more second. Okay, ready, thanks. Lack 
2023-7 version 2 temporary transfers on June 10th we have gone the period for review and as of that date for a period of two weeks we will let the community know whether the proposals reached consensus please follow the discussion in the policy list this brings us to the end of the second part of the public policy forum and after lunch we will continue and we'll be back at 2 thank you